We've come to the British Motor Yacht Show here at Swanwick Marina to take an opportunity to see two boats back to back. So we're going to present this a little bit differently. We're going to show you both of them in detail, one after the other. And the two boats we're going to look at are the Sunseeker Manhattan 55, which is right behind me here, and the Princess F55, which is just up this pontoon over here. We're going to start with this, the Sunseeker Manhattan 55. Now, this is one of Sunseeker's most popular boats. They originally launched the predecessor to this, the 52, in 2017. And then in 2021, they released this updated model, the 55. And in that update, they just refined a lot of the exterior look. So we've got bigger glass windows down here. We've got an extra stainless steel rail instead of wire on these guardrails. And these very attractive carbon fiber insets over the engine inlets. The hull itself is the same, it's 56 foot 6 inches long and it's 16 foot wide. Very similar size to the Princess as we'll see in a minute. Now prices for this boat start at about 1.35 million XVAT but realistically once you've added a few options and certainly on this boat here I think the, the asking price for this is about 1.72 million but again once you've added that to that, you're probably looking at 1.9 to 2 million pounds. This is the brand new Princess F55. Like the Sunseeker, it's an update of a previous model and a number of different changes. Again, largely cosmetic. We've got this lovely big glass area along this side. Physically, it's a slightly bigger boat. It's 58 foot long, but almost identical beam, 16 foot beam weighs a little bit more, it's around about 31 tonnes rather than 27 tonnes and largely for that reason it has the slightly larger engines. It's the same Volvo D13 but 900 horsepower rather than 800 horsepower. Like the Sunseeker it has a hydraulic bathing platform. This one is large enough just about to take a Williams uh, 345, tiny bit bigger but that does restrict access up and down but you can fit the slightly larger boat on if you want to. Again there is an option for a crew cabin in here but the access is from inside the cockpit rather than outside it and you haven't got that option of the beach club area. Now prices for this boat start from about 1.43 million XVAT but again once you've added tax and the likely package of options that you're going to need it's going to be round about 1.9 to 2 million pounds, including taxes. Very similar price, possibly a tiny bit more than the Sunseeker, probably to reflect that slight increase in size and volume. We're going to start with the exterior. And one of the lovely things about the Manhattan is that it has the option of this beach club pack. And with the beach club pack, let me just close this up just temporarily. That is the access to the crew cabin. We'll see that in a minute but you get this lovely fold down cooking area, the grill, that all folds away in there. You've got a nice little bench, again, that all tucks up. And there is this rather fancy overhead shower. So that's all part of the Beach Club pack and one of the big features. Now, both boats have a big hydraulic platform. This one is good for a Williams 325 tender. The only thing you need to be a little bit aware of is this, if you also spec the uh, Seakeeper 6 stabiliser that will make it quite heavy so you might need to think about a slightly light, lighter tender. So good big cockpit area here. We've got a nice teak table and one of the big features here is that it's got this opening bar area into the saloon but we'll have a look at that when we look at the saloon. Now you can put extra handles along here if you want them. Lovely big sunbathing area up here. You've got a teak table that will go up and down. You can see that that's on lifting strut, so you can lift that up to have a proper dining area here, or indeed it will sink down, and then there is an infill cushion so that you can have a sort of smaller chaise long here, and then these two big sun pads on this side. Mm -hmm. 
Now, similar layout in the cockpit. We've got the U-shaped seating here. We've got the folding teak table. Whilst we're in the cockpit, I just wanted to show you that this one does have the optional extra helm station fitted. Very much like the Sunseeker, it is a shaft drive boat, but with these proportional electric Sleipner bow and stern thrusters, you can opt to have the Volvo joystick fitted to this one. So exactly the same, that just combines the shaft drive engines with the, th the thrusters to give you full control wherever you want to go. A couple of steps up onto the side decks. These ones have got the optional teak fitted and we've got grab rails on both sides. And then when you come up to the foredeck area, rather than those two parallel sunbeds, we have a separate seating area with a cut through to the other side deck. And then these adjustable backrest sun pads here. You can see that these have a couple of wooden supports underneath so they can drop down like that too and then all be covered up uh, when it's not in use. Got a handy storage area here where you can tuck the covers. Now, much like the Sunseeker, there is an option to have a Mediterranean mooring package. In that instance, you would then have extra cleats and of course winches, and there's even the cutout there. You can see where you would have the button to control the winches. Now the flybridge is one of the big selling points on this boat, and you'll see why when you come and take a look. Now this is really big. For a boat of this size, you've got a lot of space. It stretches over the full beam of the boat and a long way back over the cockpit. Now it's divided into a sitting area here, really nice sociable area. You can sit down and chat. You've obviously got the helm over on the starboard side on this boat, and then this lovely little sunbathing area just in front of it. This is a feature I always admire. It's got a little pop-up perspex screen. Just means that when you're sitting at the helm, it helps put the air up over your head when you're running at speed. Three different options for the bimini up here. This is the standard fixed bimini. Well, not fixed, it's a manual folding bimini, but you can leave it up most of the year round. You can have a hydraulic motorized bimini, or you can have a hard top. Exactly the same on the Princess, as we'll see in a minute. Helm station, got an adjustable wheel, twin Simrad screens, again, those are options. And this one is fitted with the Zenta joystick. So this is powered by a pair of uh, Volvo 800 horsepower D13s on shaft drives, but you can link it up with a Zenta joystick control. So you've got bow and stern thrusters, proportional electric thrusters, and that will control both of the thrusters with the shaft drive engines to give you very similar control as you would get with an IPS boat. Now moving back here, it's arranged with a full width table all the way across the aft section here. We've got folding teak wings to that so you can have it smaller if you want to. Really nice chunky design. And then wet bar here, fully equipped. We've got a griddle. We've got a sink, we've got an ice maker, and a fridge. Slightly different layout on the flybridge on the Princess as opposed to the Sunseeker. On the Sunseeker, if you remember, it was all the way around the stern. <clears throat> on the Princess, it's this longer section here and slightly shorter return here, so equally big seating area and a similar folding table and rather nicely underneath you can see there's a pair of cup holders and a grab rail. Exactly the same options in terms of hard tops. Obviously this boat is completely open but you can have it with a, uh, an electric bimini hood or indeed a hard top. So exactly the same, it's entirely up to you how you spec it. Similar socialising area here. On this boat, the helm is over on the port hand side, but very similar layout. You're a little bit closer to the screen on this one, so it hasn't got the additional lift up windshield, but then you haven't got the sunbathing area in front of it. So 
this little windscreen here should in fact deflect it in much the same way. Very smart helm area. Again, with the Allure pack, you get the slightly upgraded end, uh, seats, so slightly more detail and finish on the seats. We have got forward and aft movement on the seats. Typical princess wheel with this rather nice weighted central hub. So even when you turn the wheel, that stays weighted in the center. Zap repeats the same controls, the Volvo throttles, the Volvo joystick. And then this has got the twin Garmin option. Again, single is standard, twin optional. The wet bar on the princess is behind the flybridge helm seats. Lift up lid, Kenyan grill, sink, lift up tap. Now on this side, you can have a, an ice maker. This one hasn't got it fitted, but it will fit under there. On this side, I was expecting to find a fridge, but there is in fact just a bin. And that is because the fridge is actually up here by the helm. This locker here, which you lift up, currently they've put some of the covers for the screens, but if you look carefully, there is actually a chiller plate behind that. So that is in effect a refrigerated cool box and you can keep all your drinks in there. There is an option in the cockpit to have an extra helm station here. This one hasn't got it fitted, but essentially you just pull that down and then you can have an extra set of controls in here. And these bar stools are removable too. You don't have to have them if you want, if you just want to have a larger dining table here. But the lovely thing about this boat is this rather neat trick. Just by pressing this button, the whole screen drops down. They're both aft galley boats, but on this one, you also have a little bar area, which if you fold that over, then becomes the bar for the people sitting in the cockpit. Also means a lovely wide opening between the inside and the outside areas of the boat. Both boats are aft galley arrangement, but there are some differences. On the Sunseeker here, we've got no full height fridge freezer. You can see you've got a view from the helm station all the way back and no full height fridge freezer. That's because all the chilling space is over on this side. We've got two big drawers over here for fridges and two big freezers over here. So plenty of chilling space, just in a slightly different arrangement. On this boat, we've also got a rather smart wine bar in here. Or wine fridge, should I say. Otherwise the galley, pretty similar. We've got a one and a half sink over on this side. Four ring induction hob, Miele oven, and over here, storage for glasses. Yet more of those. And under here, I believe we have a half size dishwasher. A couple of steps up to the seating area of the saloon. We've got a big fixed table on this example. They do this detailing so well. I mean, on this one, you can see we've got these inset stainless steel highlights across the table. You can have that with a folding leaf if you prefer, or a table that moves in and out or up and down. This particular one is fixed. Styling, obviously that's up for grabs too. This has got the kind of herringbone fabric pattern, but you can get leather there and very stylish overhead LED lighting. It's one of the features on these Sunseekers. You can see a lot of stylish lighting. Big fixed television, doesn't have a high-low on this boat. Saw a soundbar underneath and lots more storage everywhere you look. Now this little corner unit here, this is actually freestanding. You can pull that out, it's quite heavy, but you can see that it will pull out and then you can arrange it by the table and have extra seating there. Makes a lot of sense. Often you have these tables where you get seating around three sides and the fourth side is a bit of a spare part. Helm station on the Sunseeker is over on the starboard side. There's a small step up to it and then there's a two person bench here. You can see it's got a fold up bolster. A little bit tight on headroom when you're standing but in fact once you're laid back on the bolster there's plenty of room. Few nice features going on here. We've got a multifunction wheel, that is an option, but it does mean that you can control the screens and the volume for your music and everything else while your hand's still on the wheel. You've got an adjustable wheel that will tilt for angle. You've also got a 
adjustment for the bench seat. You can see that goes forward and backwards. Not height, it's just forward and backwards. And then over on this side, we have got a drop-down electric window. Really nice feature to have that. Just means you get a nice flow of fresh air into the boat and also enables you to communicate with your crew if they're putting out fenders and lines and so on. Exactly the same Volvo throttles as we saw upstairs and a repeat of that Zenta joystick that allows you to control the thrusters and the engines all at once just from the one central control. Makes it all much easier. Access to the saloon is with this two-part sliding door. There's the first and there's the second. And then this, this is normally glass, obviously, they've just got an advert printed on this, but this is a lifting window section two. So rather than dropping down like the Sunseeker, this one lifts up, but it has a very similar effect in terms of opening up. The slight difference is that whereas the Sunseeker is at waist height and more of a kind of cocktail bar or breakfast bar area, this is a slightly lower height and with, obviously with no stools next to it, it's too low for that. But it does mean you've got a nice serving hatch out into the cockpit. Now that's quite a familiar theme throughout the boat on this actually. All the furniture seems to be slightly lower set. It's got slightly taller, deeper windows. And I think they deliberately kept the furniture low so that you can maximise the view from them. It's also quite a different style and feel. It just has a very different vibe. And it tends to be that customers either prefer one style or the other. So this is perhaps a little bit more traditional, uh, slightly more curves. Lots of wood choices again. This is the satin walnut, but you've also got a choice of the silver oak. So the alber oak, which is very light, the silver oak, and then the revere oak. This is the satin walnut, very popular option. So similar aft galley layout. This one is a little longer, whereas the Sunseeker is a bit squarer. Normally this has a, a wooden floor here so that you've got an almost sort of seamless entry from the cockpit into this stern area. I think that's so that when you come out of the sea, if you've got wet feet, then you might want to continue with the wood. It's less hassle. In this particular instance, they fitted carpet. Now I mentioned the refrigeration difference. This one has a full height fridge freezer here. So you've got the fridge section up here, the freezer section down there. Very similar layout in terms of a four ring induction burner, small microwave combined oven in there and then an optional dishwasher over on this side. Additional storage over on this side. Some lovely princess detailing. You can see when you pull these drawers out, you've got all the different glasses, perfect cutouts for them. That's just additional storage space. And here, there's a second drinks fridge giving you just a bit more chiller space. A couple of steps up from this stern area into the main saloon. Good headroom here too. And this is where you really appreciate those big windows. And one of the differences here is that they've got a high-low TV. So rather than having a TV permanently in place, that will lift up from there. We can probably demonstrate that. I press that button and I think pleasingly it's a one touch button so you don't have to stand there with your finger on the button for 30 seconds while it goes up and down but I like the fact that that is nice and discreet out the way so you can make the most of those windows when you're not using the TV. Lots of good seating on both sides. I like the fact that you've got sofas facing each other across this saloon area. There's a bit more storage under both of these and a big high-low table on this side. You can see that goes up and down. And also on this button here, the whole thing can slide in and out too. And of course, leaves that fold out on both sides to extend the table. Quite a few options on this boat. Again, these seats are part of the Allure pack, just has a bit more detail. We've got leather on this, the standard is fabric, but much like the Sunseeker, you've got lots of choices. You can spec it pretty much how you want. Helm station, up a small step. 
we've got two separate individual seats. The helm seat itself is adjustable for reach and it does have a flip up bolster. And one of the nice things here is you've got a, an electric window on both sides. So over on the navigator side and on this side, we've got a really good size drop down window. All electric and again, one touch. Now much like the Sunseeker, there's not quite standing headroom when you're standing up, but there is when you're using it as a bolster. Very nice, clean dash layout. We've got the twin Garmin screens, one row of buttons for all the major controls, the pumps and the wipers and so on. And then over on the starboard side, those Volvo throttles, the Volvo joystick and trim tab controls. Now the layout for both these boats is almost identical. This is the Sunseeker. We've got stairways coming down the lower deck and then it swings round to the port side, another couple of steps and into the owner's cabin. Full beam owner's cabin on both boats. You can see we've got plenty of headroom here in the Sunseeker and a repeat of that LED motif up in the deck head. Good size double bed, central island bed facing forwards. And then there's a number of different options. You can have the breakfast bar over on the starboard side, or you can have a sideboard unit, or you can have a chaise long. That's entirely up to the owner to choose. Good size windows down both sides, get a lovely view out. Don't really appreciate it here. We're right up against another boat. It feel, makes it feel a little bit hemmed in and probably the reason why it feels a little bit darker than the Princess. But we have also got the darker wooden here. That of course is an option. You can choose whatever wood color you like. There is a, a silver oak, um, there is walnut, there is cherry, uh, lots of different options. So ignore pretty much everything you see. You can change most of the different uh, features in terms of the wood, in terms of the fabric. All of those are up for grabs. Over on the starboard side, there's a really good sideboard unit. Lots and lots of stowage on this boat. Everywhere you look, absolutely plentiful. And LED lighting under the bed, not only gives you a little bit of room for your feet to get under there, but it gives it a nice kind of floating appearance. Big TV in the bulkhead facing the bed. A Little bit more storage behind there, quite shallow. Now what you don't get down here is space for a washer dryer that is in the crew cabin on this boat. And then another big window here, blinds exactly the same, but can't really appreciate it when you're so tight. Now the ensuite bathroom is over by the entrance. It's on the port side of the boat. And there is a sliding pocket door that just minimizes intrusion both into the cabin and the bathroom. Relatively tight in here, you can see we've got the Loo down here, sink, it's not a lot of floor space, but there is a decent shower compartment with a proper glass door. Moving forward from the owner's cabin in the Manhattan 55, on the port side, there is access to the shared bathroom. So this is the guest bathroom and that is shared between the VIP in the bow and the twin guest cabin over on the starboard side. It does mean you have dual access to it. So there's this access here and then there is ensuite access from the forward VIP. Much the same design between both boats. We've got a central island berth, bit of a step up on either side. Again, a bit of a mixture of wood. They've got the, the silvery oak up here and then the darker walnut down here. It's quite a thing at the moment to have this kind of uh, duo tone, if you like, rather than having a single wood everywhere. Just adds a bit of color and contrast in the boat. Got plenty of storage, we've got a full Hanging locker on this side. Plenty more storage over on this side. All around the bed and underneath. TV in the bulkhead facing the bed. And this is the ensuite access to that shared bathroom I talked about earlier. You need to close this door. But you can obviously lock that door from the inside and then this becomes the ensuite bathroom to the forward VIP. Third cabin over on the starboard side, typical twin cabin, it's likely to be for the children. Got relatively narrow individual single berths, but they are separated. You haven't got the option of sliding these two together like you do in the Princess. 
apparently people often ask about it, but it's not something anybody really follows through with. Most of the time it is a kid's cabin and most of the time they want two beds in there. Small screen in the bulkhead here and more storage in there. Good enough standing headroom all the way through, except right up at the front where you just begin to lose a little bit of headroom. But then once you sit, sit down or lie down on the bed, it's not a problem at all. Princess has a very similar layout to the Sunseeker. We've got the companion way down with a forward VIP and then the owner's cabin round on this side. So another couple of steps down. Taking note that as we go down here, there is room under the stairs for a washer dryer if you want to have it installed. This one has just got storage in there. Much the same in terms of the owner's cabin layout. Is it a full beam mid cabin? big central island bed facing forwards, and then a breakfast bar over on the port side on this one. Over on the starboard side, there's a sideboard unit, lots of storage in here, big deep drawer there, a couple of shallower ones, and indeed under the bed. Lovely big windows. We're not quite so hemmed in here, so it feels a bit lighter because we haven't got another boat right alongside us, but you can appreciate the size and scale of these windows. We've got a double hanging locker over on this side. A TV in the bulkhead. Good headroom all the way round. No changes in the floor height at all. And then much the same arrangement with the ensuite bathroom over on the port side. Again, a sliding pocket door so that doesn't get in your way. Slightly different layout. We've got the loo over towards the aft end of the boat, the shower more towards the forward end, and then a central sink. But good size shower compartment, full standing headroom in here and plenty of space. And then there is some natural light coming through that porthole there and a little opening section. Moving forward from the owner's cabin, we've got exactly the same layout as the Sunseeker. We've got access to the shared bathroom on this side. Now this is both the day heads, it's also the bathroom for the third cabin, and it's also an ensuite bathroom for the forward VIP. So it has access from here in the lobby area, but also ensuite access from the VIP, which we'll have a look at in a moment. Bathroom itself, very smart, decent size. We've got a separate shower compartment with a glass door, a hull window, a small opening port to get a bit of fresh air and natural light in here. Toilet forwards, nice sink in the middle, and even a heated towel rail. And then moving forward into the VIP, exactly the same layout. We've got a central double bed steps up either side and that's just because it follows the natural hull shape of the hull as it comes up to meet the stem and then we've got some storage at eye level around the bed long hull windows either side small opening ports here too mirror here so that you can sit and do your makeup with a bit of storage behind it ensuite access to the bathroom so this opens out you obviously have to close this door but you can lock that from the inside and then this becomes your ensuite bathroom and then over on the starboard side again more storage up above the bed hanging locker or storage space in here and a tv on the bulkhead the third cabin over on the starboard side, again, probably intended for kids, much the same layout. You've got two separate single beds, this one a little bit narrower, but on this particular boat, we have got sliding berths, which I should be able to show you if I can find the right button. There we go. So you can see that this berth slides across, joins up with that, so you can make it into a double if you want to. And then behind me here, we've got a full height hanging locker and behind the door a TV on the bulkhead. 
very similar in concept and in size. Got good standing headroom over here and it comes most of the way over towards the head of the bed. A little bit more headroom perhaps than the Sunseeker, it just extends a little bit further. But again, once you sit down, you've got clearance over here too. Access to the Sunseeker's engines is through this hatch in the cockpit floor. Lift it up and then drop down the ladder here. Now, this boat is fitted with twin Volvo D13 800 horsepower engines. It's a slightly smaller, lighter boat than the Princess. It's around about 27 tonnes. But with these 800 horsepower engines rather than the 900 horsepower engines, it'll do a very similar speed around about 32 and a half knots. Fuel tanks, this one has got 2,200 litres, should give a range of around about 250 miles at about 20 knots. Now other options, both boats have the option of Seakeeper stabilisers. This one, because it's slightly smaller and lighter, means that you can have a Seakeeper 6, a little bit cheaper, it's around about 75,000 pounds, X-Tax. Both boats on shaft drive and both boats with big generators. Access to the engine hatches via this nice big hatch in the cockpit. So lift that up. And then you can see that rather neatly it's divided into two separate areas. So we've got this kind of clean zone here with the generator over on one side and the air conditioning units on the other. And then access through to the engines themselves. So I'll just drop down a bit. Now, this boat has the same Volvo D13 engines, but because it's a bit bigger and heavier, it has the 900 horsepower engines as standard. That will help offset the extra three or four tonnes that it weighs and means it has very similar performance of around about 32 to 33 knots. Now, because it's using slightly bigger engines in a heavier boat, it has a slightly bigger fuel tank, so it's about 2,750 litres, and that should give a very similar range of around about 250 miles at 20 knots or so. Traditional shaft drive arrangement. You can see the engine's tilted slightly back, the shaft running under here. You can fit a Seakeeper stabiliser, this boat doesn't have it. And again, because it's slightly bigger and heavier, you need to upgrade the Seakeeper to a Seakeeper 9. Uh, it's slightly more expensive, it's around about £100,000. But with that extra capacity, that means it will keep the boat exactly as steady. So very similar, just needs slightly bigger engines, slightly more fuel and slightly bigger Seakeeper to give the same performance. Well, now we've had a quick look around both boats. We've seen the Princess F55 here and the Sunseeker Manhattan 55 over here. As you can see, in many ways, they're very similar boats. They're almost identical in terms of layout and features. But the big separator is largely the style. And that's what it tends to come down to. Speaking to salesmen for both the Princess and the Sunseeker, they both say that people tend to make their mind up based on the style or a particular element or feature of the boat that they really like. There's very little to choose between them in terms of layout, in terms of cabin space. But do you prefer the more modern contemporary style of that Sunseeker with its lovely cocktail bar area or the slightly more traditional laid back and tiny bit bigger Princess. Probably going to cost a little bit more to the Princess because of that slightly larger size and larger engines and Seakeeper but otherwise very comparable. But it's not me who's going to be choosing it, it's you. So what I would like to know is which boat you prefer and why. So please let us know in the comments below and I can't wait to read them.